Now that I've explained Animate Dead, it is time to get into the subclass that is made for that spell. School of Necromancy Wizard. Welcome to Pack Tactics, where all my jokes are bone dry. As expected at this point, you get two features right at level two. First is your typical savant feature, which for some reason wants to make you less willing to pick up spells fitting for your subclass when you level up. Necromancy Savant. Beginning when you select this school at second level, the gold and time you must spend to copy a necromancy spell into your spellbook is halved. This is not very influential one way or another. Next is Grim Harvest. At second level, you gain the ability to reap life energy from creatures you kill with your spells. Once per turn, when you kill one or more creatures with a spell of first level or higher, you regain hit points equal to twice the spell spell's level, or three times its level if the spell belongs to the school of necromancy. You don't gain this benefit for killing constructs or undead. This is certainly not as good as a lot of other level 2 wizard subclass features, but I guess it's some extra hit points. At least the subclass wasn't released after Tashes, because then it would probably only be proficiency times per long rest. Anyways, over a day, the hit points do add up but it's not a lot. The first and second level necromancy spells that do damage are really bad, and one of them tricks you into melee. If you're going to blast, just use shatter and binding ice and stuff like that. You still get to regen HP, but obviously not as much as necromancy. After a few levels of having to cope with basically just being a normal wizard, oh, the horror. No, seriously though, even a subclassless wizard is just better than majority of the other classes with their subclasses. So don't let Grim Harvest intimidate you. You're still incredible. But anyways, you get your next subclass feature at level 6, which is what everyone is here for. Undead Thrall. At level 6, you add the Animate Dead spell to your spellbook, if it is not already there. When you cast Animate Dead, you can target one additional corpse or a pile of bones, creating another zombie or skeleton as appropriate. Whenever you create an undead using a necromancy spell, it has additional benefits. The creature's hit point maximum is increased by an amount equal to your wizard level. The creature adds your proficiency bonus to its weapon damage rolls. My anime dead video goes in great depth about this spell, but as a quick reminder for you guys. For a third level slot, you normally take control of one zombie or skeleton, but you can assert control over four. This feature changes the former, but not the latter. If you guys remember me talking about the importance of AC for sturdiness, you'll remember me saying one hit point is worth more when you have higher AC than when you have lower AC. I'll illustrate illustrate a quick example here. For the sake of ease, I won't be taking into account Undead Thrall. A troll is a CR6 enemy. It does an average 8.6 damage with their claws versus 13 AC, but about 10.8 versus 8 AC. That means without the bonus to hit points, a skeleton with 13 AC and 13 hit points would die in about 2 attacks. A zombie with 8 AC and 22 hit points would die in 3. If we add the bonus to HP, which will be 6 at this point, the zombie with 28 HP still dies in about 3 attacks. But the skeleton has now caught on, also dying in 3 attacks. This might not be the best example because the breaking point of additional hit points where skeletons die in more attacks is quite high. But I hope it gets this little tendential point about AC and hit points across. So to recap, you get a horde of minions quicker, they are sturdier, but the part we haven't talked about yet is that they also become stronger. To any damage rolls they make, they add your proficiency bonus. At this level against 15 AC with short swords, this increases the DPR of skeletons by about 50%. If you give them extra short swords and make them partake in two weapon fighting, check the other video for an explanation on that by the way. It increases the DPR by about 60%. 
Something to keep in mind here is that a strategy I recommend in the other video, namely casting Mage Stone, does not gain a benefit from this feature. You don't roll any damage at all with Mage Stone. It is all just a spell, even if you use a sling. However, once you get to a level where resistance against non-magical damage is common, you might still want to cast this spell to do damage. Gator isn't here yet, but anyways, you might ask me how many skeletons should you have active? Well, obviously you could stack up to 12 or even more, and it's really up to you. But at bare minimum, I would try to have at least 4 active. I think I would mostly go with 8. Let's animate a skeleton so you can see what it's like. Chanting the call of the dead, I cut my finger with my dagger. Peel skin from the wound and roll the blood and flesh in bone dust. I smear the ball of the skull, then encant as I walk around the pile. The bones knit together and finally the skeleton stands. A sinister glow in its eye sockets. This video is sponsored by Describer. You can get box descriptions of basically everything. Thousands of scenes, including necromancy things. That's right, they even support the dead and the evil. That's pretty punk rock. Don't worry about my finger by the way. I didn't peel my skin like a potato. It would be cool if I did, but that hurts and I'm actually a wimp. Anyways, the point is, the people over at Describe are very clever wordsmiths, and incredibly creative. Describe is a useful tool to spark your imagination to the next level with these scenes, and that applies to both players and DMs. I'll give you an example. I submitted a scene using their hero tier subscription. In the description, I wrote something like, Page blah 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 has a bag of beans, and it says a pyramid with a 60 foot square base burst upwards. Inside is a sarcophagus containing a mummy lord. All I need is a pyramid coming out of the ground. I was expecting something like an earthquake happening and trees falling over and stuff like that, but they gave me a way cooler scene. I used it for my beans video and I'm very happy with it. I believe there's another layer to power gaming you need to optimize, especially as a DM, and that's creating fantastic scenes to immerse the table deeper into the world that's about delving into dungeons to kill dragons. And I believe Describe is the perfect tool for this. Check out Describe.com slash Pack Tactics, it's awesome, and if you like what you see, they hope to earn your subscription. Use the code Pack Tactics at the checkout to get 10% off your first subscription payment. Next up is Inert to Undeath. Beginning at 10th level, you have resistance to necrotic damage, and your hit point maximum can't be reduced. The rest of the text is just flavor text. There's only a short list of enemies that can reduce your maximum hit points, but it's really annoying when it does happen to you. So this is some nice tail protection. It does allow you to cast Create Megan without losing hit points, which makes it a lot better. Necrotic damage is a bit more common, and my beloved Absorb Element sadly can't protect me from necrotic damage, so that's pretty nifty. Well then, we're almost at the end of the video, and I kinda hope Gator would be back by now, but I guess he's still getting some chicken wings. Anyways... Come on, come on, come on! The chickens are coming! The chickens! What did you do? Who raised all these chickens? What is this? Kobold, what do we do? I gotta finish this video fast, but I suck at talking. I talk so slow. Command Undead is next. Wait, this is perfect. Starting at 14th level, you can use magic to bring undead under your control, even those created by other wizards. As an action, you can choose one undead that you can see within 60 feet of you. That creature must make a charisma saving throw against your wizard spell save DC. If it succeeds, you can't use this feature on it again. If it fails, it becomes friendly to you and obeys your commands until you use this feature again. Intelligent undead are harder to control in this way. If the target has intelligence of 8 or higher, it has advantage on the saving throw. If it fails the saving throw and has an intelligence of 12 or higher, it can repeat the saving throw at the end of every hour until it succeeds and breaks free. Okay, here we go. Bippity boppity boo, I command you to chill! Oh, 
Thank Curdle Mac, we're safe. That was a close one. A cool part about this feature is there's no CR limit at all. Well, I say cool, but it's closer to spooky. This can actually be really strong. And yes, usually you cannot command multiple creatures with this feature, but I homebrewed it to save Gator. I hope you guys don't mind. It's not like you can control who you find, but do keep your eyes out for strong undead with bad mental stats. Nightwalkers and storm giant skeletons are pretty good, but there's a lot more to find. Hain, who puts out content on Form of Dread, lists a few more in his necromancy spotlight, if you want to check it out. I also want to put ghosts on that list because they can possess people. Sure, DC 13 save is low, but if you happen to find a ghost, why not? That might come in handy to possess the king to control a country, for example. I feel that ghosts are optimal at very heavy roleplay tables. Other than that, it's not that special. That's it. As a last note, I would like to remind everyone that D&D is a team game, so make sure the rest of the table is okay with you running around with an undead arm or having a necromancer in the party in general. Minions can get annoying to control without proper boundaries. And maybe necromancy is evil in your setting and people don't want to have an evil player in their party. Talking to people is truly overpowered. Conclusion, it's bad at low levels, but it gets online at level 6. Obviously, this subclass can potentially give you some unique roleplay opportunities. I'd say this is an okay subclass. Even when it's bad, you're still playing the best class in the game. Never forget that. Shoutouts to Tater for letting me show his chickens. Me and Dscribe hope to earn your subscription! Thank you for watching! Bye bye